Hey guys, welcome back. Last time we left off when we could log in a user. So we can register a user and basically come over here and then make a request to the login endpoint and then get our, our user authenticated. If the user's password or the if the user's password is not correct, we get the invalid credential message. But when it's correct, we go ahead and get the JWT token given to the user, and then the user can use this token to access other endpoints. So what we need to do in this one is be able to set up JWT authentication to work with the Django REST framework. So if you're not familiar with what JWT authentication is or even token authentication in general, what happened was whenever we logged in this user, we went ahead and created this hash or this JWT token here. And in this token, there are things like the username or the email that we encoded in here. So on the server, when we have this token, we can be able to tell which user it is and we can track everything they are trying to do. But for it to be able to work, we need to basically write more code and configure it with the Django REST framework since it doesn't come with JWT authentication configured. So basically, we want to be able to do request.user in any of our views and when a user is logged in or when they have the token, be able to get that user. So here, I'm going to create a class here. So the, the endpoint that comes to mind that we can test with is an endpoint that can return for us the current logged in user. So over here, I'm going to call this endpoint, I'm going to call this view auth user API view. <laughs> then let's inherit from generic API view and then let's handle a get. Since for this one, since for, since for this endpoint, a user would make a get request with a token in the header. So here let's have a def get text in self and request. You know that with Django to get a logged in user, you can be able to do request.user. Okay. And for it for this to work, for this not to throw an error when the user is not authenticated, we need to have permission set up on this view. So over here with the Django, so over here with generic API views, we can set up permission classes. And this has to be an iterable, it can be a list or a tuple. So over here. I'm going to, so over here, make sure you import permissions from REST framework like this, and then we can now use REST, we can now use permissions. Then we want the user to be authenticated to access this view. Okay, meaning they should have a token at least. So now that we have the user, we need to basically serialize this data and send it back to the client as JSON. Now we already have the register serializer. So if you take a look at what the register does, it basically, whenever we register a user, let me actually show you something here. So if you go to register, is it register sign up? Yeah, register, I believe. Yeah, so if we register a user, you see we get their username and email. And this is what we want to get when we say get current user data, when we have only the token. So we are going to use the same serializer that gives us this data, and that's the register serializer. So over here, I'm going to have serializer equals register serializer then we can pass in the user we need to serialize the user data basically request.user returns for us a user model instance and that's the one we pass here so that we can get a serialized version so here we can return the response to the user so we can turn response dot response and then we can send serializer which i'm just gonna have a user's key here then we will have serializer dot data okay serializer.data like this okay so now that we have this view we need to hook it up in our urls so i'm going to go to our urls and also have the one that has a slash user then it's going to be of user api view let's change the name so it's unique so basically now we can go in here and make the get request to our url so we can do slash user so when you do this you see straight off we get authentication credentials we are not provided and that's because we are not providing them. So what we need, we need to go to our login and get that token we get. So let's make the post instead. So when we get the token, we are going to copy it. And then now if we go to our auth, in Postman, you have the auth tab. So you can use this. You want to select bearer token. Now what happens when you select bearer token is here, let's say we put the token here. Postman will be making the request, but it's going to be prefixing this token with a bearer like this bearer space then this so this is something you will need to do manually if you're not using something like this postman but you can see that the scheme is implemented using this convention so you have the bearer space then the JWT token so here if we make the get request with the token so i'm gonna go to here then we do the get to the user 
You see that still we are not able to get that user even when we are passing a token and we are sure we just got it from login. And that's because we need to set up JWT authentication for our application. So to be able to set up a, an authentication scheme, we are going to need to create a class that inherits from base authentication. I'm going to create another module called JWT.py. So over here, I'm going to reach out for some things from REST framework. So I'm going to go REST framework authentication. We're going to import get authorization header. We're also going to import base, base authentication like this. Okay, so here we can set up our class. So I'm going to call this class JWT authentication. Then we are going to inherit from base authentication. So if you go to base authentication, you will see that we need to implement a method called authenticate. And all this stuff is documented here. So if you go to the documentation, you will see that for you to be able to create a custom, a custom class to authenticate, you need to inherit from this class and implement the authenticate method. So our goal in the authenticate method is to be able to return the user and the token once we have them or to throw an authentication failed exception. So that's what we need to do. So over here, let's go ahead and implement the authenticate. So in JWT, let's have def authenticate. Okay. Okay, so in authenticate, what we need first is to get the authorization header now here we can do authorization. I'm just gonna say auth header. So from restroom authentication, we have this helper to get the header. So you can say get authorization header, then we pass it the request. Okay. So that's gonna give us the headers, but the headers come in a format that we need to first decode and make sure that Python can easily work with, with, with the data. So here you can say auth data equals auth header. Then we want to call decode. Then we can pass in the encoding, so we're going to use UTF-8. And then here, we basically have the token string we can work with. So now that we have the auth data as a string, we can go ahead and split it so that we can get the token. So here I'm going to say auth token. So this is going to be auth data. Then we can call split on it. So we're going to split by the space. Okay. So here I'm going to do a simple check to make sure that we have the, the user is sending a, a token in a correct format. So I'm going to do if the length of the auth token, because when we split, so when we split, it's going to give us a list with two items, bearer, and then the token string itself. So here we can check if it's not two. So if it's not two, then we can raise an exception. So I'm going to do raise, let's import exceptions. So from REST framework, import exceptions. So here you can do raise exceptions. Then we want to call authentication failed and then say something like token not valid. Okay, so if this passes, that's gonna mean that we have a valid token we can check. So here I'm gonna have a token variable. This is gonna be now, this, this now is gonna be the token in the first index because now we have bearer in the first index and then we have bearer in the zeroth index and then token in the second one, which is one actually. So here we can do auth data both token then one okay so now that we have the token remember remember our our method our authenticate needs to return the user and then the token and the user has to be an instance of our Django model so over here we need to get now the user who has this token so what we'll do is we're going to first decode it so we can get the username from it since as you know in our models whenever we assign the Whenever we assign a token to the user, we encode in there the username and then the email. So we can get this very information to be able to query our model by that user. So over here, I'm going to have a payload variable. Then it's going to be, let's import JWT because now we need to, to decode our token. So import JWT. Also, we are going to import settings because we need to access our secret key that we used to sign. So from Django conf import settings. Okay. So over here now we can say Jedi routine. We want to call decode. So decode takes in the token string we want to decode. In this case it's token. And then the second one is the secret key we used. So ours is, is in the is the set is the secret key in settings. So here you can do settings secret key. Then the second part we need to pass in the algorithms key. 
So this is gonna be either a list or none. So it is required that we pass it in. If we don't pass it in, it's gonna fail. So here we pass algorithms. Then let's see the one we used. It must match the one we used when we were creating that token. So we used uh, HS256 and that's the one we wanna use. So I'm gonna come over here and pass it as a string like this should be fine. So now actually here, yeah, since we are decoding the tokens, it's likely that when we fail to decode the token, our application is gonna throw errors. So what we wanna do here is wrap everything in a try except broke. So I'm gonna have a try, and then I'm gonna just indent everything in here. And then let's have a, an accept. Let's have an accept so we can handle our errors properly. So accept, first off we want to handle when the token is expired. So you can do handle, jwt.expired signature error. Okay. So here, now we can also raise an exception like this. When the token has expired, so let's raise it and then say token is expired. Login again. Let's also have, let's also handle when the token is not a good JWT or if the user really tampered with it and our server doesn't understand it. So that's gonna be a decode error. So you can say token is invalid. Okay. Okay, so now that we've handled our cases when we can't really get the token. So over here, now that we have the payload, this means that we have decoded our token and we have the user. So, so now over here, now we can get like the username Let's have it as payload, username. Okay. So now we can, since you know, for this method, we need to return the user instance. We need, we can now query our model for this user. So let's import our model. So from authentication, dot models, import the user. So import user, okay. So now over here, we can now say user equals user objects dot get user username. So this might also throw an error. So when it throws an error, the error will be handled inside these accepts. So to handle that, we can also accept, accept user does not exist. This one has no user. Okay. So here we can also raise an exception. So we can have something like raise exception, no such user. Okay. Okay. So if this goes well, we will have our user and now we can return this user with the token. So you can say return we need to return this as a, if you take a look at the documentation, we need to return it like this. So we can return user and also the auth token. Actually the token itself, the token string, which is token here. Okay. So now if we go back to our postman and we try to do the same request, notice that it still fails. And that's because the Django REST framework doesn't know that we were creating a class that we think can authenticate for us. So what we need to do is we need to go to our settings.py and also tell the Django REST framework to use it for authentication. So we'll go anywhere around here and then we are going to set up a REST framework config. And in here, we want to set up the default authentication classes and use our own. So if you go down here, we're going to have something like this. I'm going to bring it in. So here we can now put the path to our authentication module. So in our case, it's going to be in authentication, which is the app. And then we want to do dot JWT, dot JWT authentication, like this. Okay, so now that we have this, then we can go ahead and now test it again. So I'm gonna go to still the same request and click send. So notice that we get token not valid. Yeah, so you notice that here we are sending it like this, but we want to, since we are using Postman, it's already adding the, it's, it's already adding the bearer. So we want to remove the bearer ourselves and then click send. And now you can see that our application is sending us the user who has this token. So the way that's happening is in our view, we just do request.user, 
and uh, Django REST framework will already have done the authentication using the method we described here. Okay, so that's it. That's how we go about setting up the JWT authentication scheme with Django REST framework. Now, I want to mention that there are some libraries that you guys can use to implement most of the use cases for, for JSON web tokens. So the recommended one is Django REST framework simple JWT. I have some tutorial on those. I will basically leave a link for the series where we use this in the description. If you guys want to see how we use it. So it can cover a lot of use cases, but I wanted to show you what exactly happened behind the scenes. I believe even with that module itself, they go ahead to implement something like this. But the good thing with it is they already have all the code written. You can just use it. But it's it's really important to know how things are working under the hood if you want to implement things that are in the similar nature. So yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I hope it was a little helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll talk to you soon. And by the way, if a user here enters something that's not correct, see we get token is invalid. But yeah, so our stuff are working good. I will talk to you guys in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. Peace.